If you ever go through the DIY section of a micro center, you will see a large cluster of electronic sensors and modules packaged in a blister pack with blue and white cardboard for backing. These devices are made by Velamin, intended to be used with Arduino. They even provide libraries, wiring diagrams, and sample code on their website. Luckily, you can even get part numbers for the components, should you decide to implement the design in another project. Today I'm going to look at the VMA401, stepper motor driver with provided motor. Now I could just hook an Arduino to the module as the PDF specifies, type out a brief sketch and be on my way. But that's not how I do things. No, it has to be done the hard way. To be honest, this module is so simple in operation that any microcontroller would be too easy. I need to go discreet. Looking at the ULN2003, the chip that drives this module, the chip is merely a Darlington array. Granted, each Darlington set has a flyback diode, so obviously it was designed to drive inductive loads like a motor. But how can these transistors drive a stepper motor? Now, I'm not going to explain how stepper motors are driven, as multiple videos exist out there that can explain it far better than I'm willing to. But the big takeaway is, the motor needs to receive a series of pulses in a particular order. So we need to send sequential pulses into the motor, and luckily the module makes it pretty clear what order the inputs should be pulsed. So all I need to do is design a circuit that can send pulses in a sequence, like a counting circuit. Introducing the CD4017. This chip can turn a simple square wave into a sequence of incrementing pulses, and wiring it up is as simple as hooking the outputs to the corresponding inputs of the ULN2003 and plugging in a clock. For my clock, I will be using the signal generator on this protostation, but this can easily be replaced by a 555 timer in an A-stable multivibrator configuration. With everything connected, we can provide 12 volts to the circuit and boom, the motor spins, and adjusting the clock frequency will change the speed. There is however a limitation. The motor can only spin in one direction. But this really isn't a problem because with the exception of a few niche applications, stepper motors only need to spin in one direction. Yeah, like I said, niche applications. What is this, 2003? That, that's almost entirely irrelevant today. Uh, fine, stepper motors may need to be reversible. Let's revisit the circuit. So the CD4017 does have enough outputs left to wire the pins in reverse. But without a way to force the chip to start to count in the middle of the outputs, there's really no way to use just one. But with two chips, surely we can set one chip up for forward rotation and another chip for backwards rotation. Then using a single pole dual throw switch, we should be able to enable one chip at a time. Except it's not that simple. The CD4017 does have an enable pin, but that pin merely pauses the operation in its current state once pulled high. However, toggling the VCC pin on each chip has a more convincing result. Pulling this pin low pulls all of the outputs low, so if we toggle which chip is powered, we can change the pulse order. But since there will always be a pin pulled high despite all the outputs being pulled low by the disabled chip, we need a way to keep the inevitable short circuit from happening. Since all the pins will be defaulted to low, we should be able to eliminate this by pulling each output to ground through a resistor. And that should do it. But it doesn't. So in testing some weird things were happening. When I was manually pulling the pins high, with the CD4017 turned off, sometimes some of the pins would enter a floating state. After some further tinkering, I finally got the answer as to what was happening. Somehow the current was leaking within the chip, pulling the nearby outputs into an undefined state. And this eventually killed the second output on my chip, locking it in a high state. And to make matters worse, when pulling the chip out of the circuit, I lost my grip, bent a few pins, and broke one. This chip has been in my possession since the early days of my adventures in this hobby, and it has served me well through various experiments and numerous bad ideas. This experiment was just apparently too far. 
Let's share a moment of silence for the brave Chip as soldiered on until the end. Okay. I do have more CD4017 chips, but I'm not willing to risk them just yet. There has to be a better solution. Like a chip that can count up or down by toggling a pin. The most hopeful result I could find was the CD4019, which I may have to place an order for. It still has four outputs, which will satisfy the driver needs, and toggling to two different clock pins will cause it to count up or down, at least according to the datasheet. I may have to explore this later, but for now, I have had enough. I started this with the goal of using discrete components to drive this module. With the CD4017 solution, discrete would have been a stretch, but with this new chip, that word may no longer be applicable. With the old solution, the logic gates comprising both the CD4017 and the ULN2003 could easily be rebuilt with simple transistor arrays. With this new system, I would have to look at the logic diagram for the CD4019 to determine if it is still simple. And getting back to the topic of this video, the actual module, I have a couple of issues with it. First of all, this module is not going to drive some of the more common NEMA style stepper motors. Um, just the motor that comes with the kit, which is intended to be driven with it, is not wired up the same way as far as this coil arrangement. The other issue I have is the ULN2003 has seven inputs and seven outputs. And this design only uses four of them, which is fine. What I don't understand is why on earth they broke out, although not placed headers, on the remaining three inputs, but left the outputs unconnected. It almost looks like they intended for something different to be done with the design, and then settled for the current configuration. I don't know. Was this an oversight, or was there a plan? You tell me. Anyways, see you next time.